Hey everyone, it's Emily with Hearty Soul. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're in the kitchen and I'm whipping up some elderberry syrup. Elderberries have a lot of super amazing vitamins and elements to the berry that make it a super immune system booster. Elderberries are actually something called an immune moderator, so it helps moderate your immunity, which makes it a really nice supplement for the winter time when it's cold and flu season. We take one teaspoon for an adult and a half a teaspoon for our kids. And we usually take that when we sort of see signs of the flu or cold coming into the house. We'll kind of start taking that a little bit more. It also helps cut the illness in half or at least decreases the amount of time that we're sick, which is awesome. So we've been out picking elderberries and I usually make this recipe using fresh elderberries and I usually also keep some dried elderberries on hand for when it's the middle of winter and the elderberries aren't out. We did do some picking of elderberries recently and I'm gonna show you how I get them ready to become syrup. So once we snip a cluster of elderberries, we want to make sure that this cluster is really nice and ripe and ready for picking. So I'll just literally snip the entire cluster off of the plant and then put that into a basket or a box, something with a solid bottom because you don't want those tiny little berries to fall through any cracks. Those are precious little elements and we want to make sure we keep every single one. So we put them into I had a laundry basket this time and I literally held the laundry basket underneath the plant and I snipped the clusters of elderberries right down into my laundry basket. It saved all of those berries um, that I needed to keep. Now, a lot of the berries won't come off of the cluster very easily. I mean, we could literally spend hours pulling each individual berry off of the cluster. Or what we've been doing in the past is simply putting them into a brown paper sack like this. And you can see the elderberries in there. Now this has been in my freezer for about two days just because I haven't gotten around to it, but you could just freeze it for about a day. I roll this entire thing up like this. And then I just set it in my freezer like this. Now, since it's been out of the freezer, all of those little tiny elderberries are frozen. So it's going to make it really easy for them to fall off of the stem. So once I get it out of the freezer, I just took this out and I wanna do this before they get too thawed out. Um, and I'm just going to shake the bag. You can hear them falling off of the stem as I do it. And from this, I just take out as many as I need in order to make elderberry syrup. So in this case, when I'm using a fresh elderberry, I'm going to use two cups of fresh elderberries. If you're doing a dried elderberry, which works just as well, I use one cup of dried elderberries. So it's just that there's less um, bulk with a dried version as compared to the amount of juice that's in the fresh version of elderberries. So let's see how I did in here. Just taking some of the steps and actually just shaking them out, I did pretty well because that leaves, as you can see, a lot of the stem with no berries, which is what we want. All right, so I'm going to sort of create a little crease in my bag here and pour out the elderberries right into my bowl. Now as stems come out, I'm gonna remove those. 
we don't want any stems or What I'm going to do is just go through and pull out any little stem. We don't want that in our syrup. I'm going to put these back in the freezer quick before they thaw. Because I know I can get more berries off of that, but I'm pretty sure I've got my two cups already in this bowl, which is what I wanted. All right, I'm going to clean up my mess and we'll get back to making syrup. measured out four cups of filtered water and I'm just going to start by putting that in my large stock pot. Then I'm going to add my two cups of fresh berries. So I'm just sifting out any little stems that I see that are floating to the top as I pour my fresh elderberries in. I just want to make sure I have the least amount of stems in here as possible as the stems can be toxic. Also, I want you to know that you should not eat elderberries straight up. They will give you a bellyache. It will not be it will not be good. They are intended to be cooked in order to use in such things like jellies and jams and that kind of thing. So, we're going to make syrup today and I've got my 2 cups of fresh elderberries in my 4 cups of water. Next, I'm going to peel some ginger and I'm going to put that in here as well. Oh, I love the smell of ginger. It just smells like wintertime cloves. Oh, it's just. You can peel it, you don't have to. This is going to get put through a sieve of sorts anyway, so none of the actual pieces and skins will be going through into the syrup anyway. All right, I'm just going to add my ginger here. Then I'm going to add about eight cloves. I'm going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon. After I've added all my ingredients, we're just going to stir up here. And then I'm going to get this on my stove. Okay, so once we've let this elderberry syrup simmer on the stove for about 45 minutes, I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm going to put my strainer over top of my large glass measuring cup and I'm going to pour the syrup through this strainer into my cup. I'm gonna do this slowly as possible and then every once in a while I'm going to just kind of smush my berries so I get all of that good juice out. Once I get it all in here, 
I'm going to let it cool really good until I add the honey because if you add the honey too early when it's too hot, it will reduce the benefits of the honey itself. So I'm going to let this cool a bit um, so it's not hot to the touch. Warm enough to help blend the honey in but not too hot to overdo the benefits of the honey. Here we've got about two cups of liquid which is perfect. We wanted that to reduce down by about half of the liquid. So we started with four cups and we reduced that in half. So we got it down to two cups of liquid. So from here, this is pretty cool. I mean, it's not hot to the touch, so it's the perfect time to add our one cup of honey. And I use our local um, honey from a local source. Uh, they are literally just a mile away from us, so I know it is the most local honey I can get my hands on. Three cups until I reach the three cup level on my measuring cup there that's when I know I'll add one entire cup and while it's still warm I'm going to whisk it around help break up that honey and dissolve that together The next thing we need to do, since I am going to be canning this elderberry syrup, is I'm gonna be adding a quarter cup of lemon juice. You can use fresh squeezed or something out of the bottle. However you like, we just need to use a little bit of acid in order to preserve the elderberry syrup during the canning process. So to can one pint of elderberry syrup, we're going to in a hot water bath for 25 minutes. I've got all of my jars ready. They're clean and hot right in my sink, ready for me to fill them with elderberry syrup and then I'm going to can them for 25 minutes. I love having all of this really nice spice in here like the ginger and the cinnamon and the cloves. It basically, those spices will wake up your inner system and say, wake up, accept these really nice benefits from the elderberry. That's why I like using a lot of cinnamon and cloves, and especially ginger. I'll link my other ginger drink recipe that I love right here too for you. All right, I'm just going to fill up my pint jars. about a quarter inch of head space on my jars there. And this one's not going to quite get full, but I'm going to make another batch, so that's okay. So I'm just gonna place my lid on, make sure that there's nothing on my surface here. Place my lid on and my ring, and I'm just gonna put this in my canner for 25 minutes. We take one teaspoon for an adult and a half a teaspoon for our kids. And we usually take that when we sort of see signs of the flu or cold coming into the house. We'll kind of start taking that a little bit more. Some people like elderberry syrup over their ice cream. I just can't tell you how good this is. I have to keep the kids from drinking it down like juice. So we don't ever have a hard time getting them to take it. Thanks so much for joining me this week as we make elderberry syrup. I hope you enjoy the recipe and share with all of your family and friends to keep everybody healthy and safe this cold and flu season. I hope you'll join me next week for the next video. 
subscribe if you like videos like this. Have a great week.